Hi, in this video, I want to show you how to set up a gas assisted injection molding process in uh, Moldex 3D 2024 uh, is the version that I'm using now. I have already made some uh, uh, runs because then I have the possibilities to show you also some results. So the first step is uh, in this case to make a new run like this. And then you have to secure that uh, this one is uh, put to gas assisted injection molding and import uh, part. I'm not uh, take uh, cooling and, uh, and a mold base into this uh, simulation. I just keep it uh, quite simple and only focus on the gas assisted uh, injection molding the process in that so um, i'll double click here say a part yes i'll put on a gate in this case i'll put on a cold runner at the start but i'll uh, rename it as a hot runner because i need a normally a valve valve uh, gate uh, in the hot runner otherwise i can't close it and the gas will Enter in backwards into the system out in the runner system, and that's not something we like. Um, I'll just keep it as cold runner in the start. I'll take this one, I'll move it a bit down. I only took uh, so it hit the midpoint, and then I'll move it, yes, from this point and in that direction then I can just hit the tabulator, then it's locked in that direction. And I just write in uh, the length and let's just say 10 millimeters like this. Then I click it, right click, edit attribute and give it a hot runner like this. Now I have this defined. So uh, now I need also to define the gas valve. And the gas valve is defined by a boundary of a melt entrance, just with another uh, ID. So I use this melt uh, inlet here, and I give it a two. And then I point on this one, say add, yes, okay. And now you can see if I go to display, um, melt inlet. Uh, okay. Then uh, you can see it here. Melt entrance two, melt entrance one. So um, now I need uh, a mesh, like in normal mesh. I'll choose eleven boundary layers because I need a lot of. Uh, uh, small steps in the mesh uh, at the surface where you have the boundary uh, on the results from the gas and the plastic. Um, so I need a huge density of mesh there. So I use 11 layers. If you're not able to use 11 layers, you can uh, allow it up here um, by typing in 11 here in the preferences. So um, I'll make a seeding. Yes, I'll make 1.5 maybe. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think it's okay. I click once, but I need a bit more fine mesh here. So I just mark this one and say 0.3 maybe. Ah, 0.54, like this. Yes. And then I want to generate. I'll have a look at that. Looks good. Let's see. Yeah. Final check. Just to open a direction, I actually have no influence at all. Um, and if you want to see the mesh, I go to tools, make a chisel, and you can look inside how the mesh is. This is uh, okay. 
in some cases I would prefer to have fully hex mesh here where I have like a, yeah, squares on top and then extrude it all through the wall thickness and then uh, stitch together with uh, some uh, boundary layer mesh in the ears out here, for example. That would be the, the best mesh. So now back to this one, I'll choose a material. Melt one here. I'll just take the other, the one that I had already. And down here, this one, no, this is a gas. So um, now it's defined as a gas. Next step is to set up the process. And the first uh, step here is um, the capability of the machine. I'll just hand in 5,000 bar and 1,000 bar, 5,000 in the injection because I don't need any restrictions and packing pressure is 1,000 bar as a restriction, but I'll not, I'll not use any packing pressure when I have the gas because the gas will actually expand from inside and press the plastic out on the surface and do a uniform packing of the part. So um, now in fill pack here, I have um, the material. I can't do anything right about that, but the filling time I need to define. This is the time of how uh, of how long um, time does it actually do I want the, the melt the plastic to um, be at of entering into the cavity I'll just take one second and then I can profile it I will not do that and I can put a pressure limit on it I can I will not do that then uh, I'll just let it uh, go to 100% no switch over you can say because the switch over when you say, okay, now I put the enough plastic material inside the cavity and I press the rest of the plastic out in the corners of the cavity by the, the gas injection that is controlled in the inlet two here. So this is more or less how it should be every time. Um, because you have a timing and then you don't have a packing time, uh, doesn't matter the machine pressure, and then you can adjust the melt temperature and mold temperature. Of course, this mold temperature is the initial mold temperature. If you have no cooling, it will use this as the general uh, mold temperature all over the cavity surface. Next step is uh, defining the gas. And here, I can't change the filling time now because it's defined in the um, in in the inlet one, which is the um, plastic. And uh, then I can define when do I just stop the plastic of entering to the cavity, and when do I provide a gas pressure. So in this case, I've chosen. Uh, 80% of the volume of the cavity, but I'll go down to 60 maybe. Uh, depends on the material and how much gas you can put into it. Then there's the delay time. Um, normally, a delay time is from stopping the melt going into the cavity and starting the gas uh, flow, flowing in to, uh, flowing into the cavity through the this gate. So in this case, I'll go with zero. So exactly when you close the valve gate here, it uh, it um, press it starts uh, injecting the gas. And the gas rotation is the time where you have the pressure or the gate open here and the pressure inside the cavity. Um, yeah. And then you have the gas pressure. In this case, 200 bar, you can put it to, I think a normal pressure around gas is depend on, the, uh, on which part, of course, you're making. But uh, around 80 to 120 bar is not unreasonable. 
but uh, let's just put in 100 bar and then yeah nothing more to do here then next step is uh, here the cooling time you can change that but uh, it's not calculated this is so that was actually the this um, the process and the next step is uh, to define which kind of simulation you want to run i use this one fill pack and a warp save and then computation nothing uh, much to change i use these settings Next step is the computation. Nothing much to change compared to the normal injection molding. Um, the only thing is uh, if you want more time steps and I want that, I put in uh, maybe 55. So I got a time step every uh, 0.1 second. And Cooling, no cooling, enhanced wall, yeah. Not much to say to that. Okay. And now it's ready to run. It's just put up the analysis and run it. Run it. Um, the results that you get out is, um, for example, if you look at a normal injection molding, uh, this is the normal one. It's just filled. Sorry, I need to go to the filling results. You can see, yeah, fills up yeah, like normal. And the warp is quite uniform because there's nothing push uh, taking it uh, one or the other direction. Um, if we then look at the gas assisted injection molding, I did a, my first switch over at 80%. And if I look at the filling, then, yeah, you can see, you can see the timing up here. And the milk goes in. And around uh, 0 0.8, one second or something like that, I can right click here and I can see gas switch 0 0.8. I've, I did a filling of 0 0.8, actually here. And now we can have a look at the gas entering. I can step forward. Ah, that's two small steps, then I can adjust it. Like this. And you can see how it moves the melt forward. Yeah. It jumps in uh, very fast because there's no restriction. And uh, afterwards, it's not possible actually to come further down because the cavity is filled very fast. Of course, what we like is uh, what we uh, our target is to get uh, is to get as much uh, air inside as possible, but with a uniform wall thickness normally. But you can see here, I have the wall thickness very close to the gate, so there will be a, an area there that will be very uh, thin. Then um, I thought, okay, let's just uh, push it a bit and uh, make the switch over at 50. 
and then I got a, a, a blow through where the actually um, the gas is uh, um, penetrating the um, the plastic inside and uh, hits the cavity uh, surface. So you get a hole in your part here. So this was uh, too much and then I tried with uh, 60 percentage and I ended out something like that. But you can see here, I have a problem about, around this gate. So I thought, okay, I need a bigger, th a thicker skin. So I put in a pause time of five seconds. So if we look at the, um, this one, I put in here, I put in a, a pause or a delay time of five seconds. So I have the injection and then a delay and five seconds after I start blowing in. Of course, you can do that with such a, um, a thick walled uh, part. But now you can see the skin thickness is bigger. And I actually ended out with uh, quite a good, let's go to this. And here you're able to see what's happening. It's my high gas pressure that actually expanded so fast. So this is maybe not the correct uh, gas pressure. But anyway, um, these are some of the results that you can get from the simulation. Um, you can also look at the uh, skin thickness, which is quite useful and scale it maybe a bit down and see how uniform it is. No, now maximum is two. If I put this for two millimeters, you can see the skin thickness there is two millimeters. But do I, we have some very thin areas? 0.8, yeah, out here. So you can play around with the geometry. You can play around with the process to find the optimum before you try to, uh, before you invest a lot of money. Okay, that's it about the, the gas assisted injection molding. Thanks for watching, bye bye.